Only private conversation recording of Hitler. On June 4th, 1942, Adolf Hitler paid a secret visit to the Commander-in-Chief of the Finnish Defense Forces, Carl Gustav Emil Mannerheim, on his 75th birthday. Sound engineer Thor Dahmen was tasked with recording the official greetings, but continued recording the private conversation for 11 minutes without their knowledge. Despite the initial success with the invasion of the Soviet Union in June of 1941, the Soviets put up a strong resistance in Moscow that delayed the German campaign. The conversation was mostly about how the Nazi leaders were seeking that their allies in the North tied down as much of the Soviet military machinery as possible. This included the Finnish people, as they were in the middle of the Continuation War, a sub-theater of World War II, in which they were fighting the Soviets with Germany's support. In 1942, Hitler visited Finland under extreme secrecy, with the official purpose of congratulating Mannerheim on his birthday. The commander received him at Imatra in southern Finland, rather than the Finnish headquarters, to keep the veil of an informal meeting. President Riti and other state and military officials greeted the Führer and accompanied him to Mannerheim's personal train for a birthday meal and highly discreet negotiations. After the official greetings, Hitler and Mannerheim got into a private wagon to have lunch, drinks, and cigars. The wagon also included a visible microphone that was set up by sound engineer Thor Dahmen. Dahmen had been assigned to record Hitler's official speech and message to the Finnish commander. However, after the speech was over, the engineer continued recording the private conversation for 11 minutes without Hitler's knowledge. An SS guard eventually realized what was happening and gave Dahmen a threatening gesture to stop recording. The guards then ordered that the tape be destroyed, but YLE, the Finnish broadcasting company hired to record the event, was allowed to keep it under the condition that it was kept safe and never published. The tape was entrusted to Kustai Velkuna, head of the state censor's office, and returned to the broadcasting company over a decade later in 1957. The tape was eventually made public a few years later and remains the only known private conversation recording of Hitler. Moreover, it's a rare example of the Führer delivering a speech without raising his voice. Darf ich Ihnen sagen, ein, ich habe das vorher den Herrn Staatspräsidenten. Ich habe das vorher nicht geahnt, hätte ich es geahnt, dann wäre mir noch schwerer zu Herz gewesen, aber der Entschluss hätte ich dann erst recht gefasst, denn es blieb ja gar keine andere Möglichkeit. Japan's unconditional surrender. When Japan surrendered at the end of World War II, Emperor Hirohito spoke directly to the population. It was likely the first time a Japanese emperor had addressed his subjects in this manner. As he used courtly formal language and avoided saying the term surrender, a profound emotional reaction confronted the proud Japanese people. Emperor Hirohito's speech was not broadcast live, but recorded a day before, on August 14, 1945, in a bunker under the Imperial Household Ministry. Sound technicians taped two versions of the speech. In the first one, the emperor spoke too softly, while in the second one, he spoke too loudly. Still, both copies were kept, and the second one became the official speech. As dishonorable as surrendering was to the Nippon Empire, many elements of the imperial army were outraged and offended by the idea of ending the war. Consequently, around a thousand officers and soldiers raided the palace to destroy the recordings and impede the broadcast but the rebels never got to the tapes. They were confused by the building's layout, and the tapes remained hidden under a pile of documents and labeled original and copy. They were then smuggled out of the palace after the coup. Meanwhile, Major Kenji Hatanaka also attempted to stop the broadcast, but the Eastern District Army ordered him to desist. At noon on August 15th, the broadcast by NHK station began with the national anthem. During the speech, the emperor said, quote, our empire accepts the provisions of their joint declaration. He was referring to the unconditional surrender that the Allies, China, and the Soviet Union had imposed on Japan, but not openly stating the fact. He continued, quote, We declared war out of our sincere desire to ensure Japan's self-preservation and the stabilization of East Asia. 
but the war situation has developed not necessarily to Japan's advantage. The emperor then mentioned the bomb and encouraged the Japanese people to work for the future. At the end of the speech, an announcer clarified that the nation had officially surrendered, and it said that most Japanese citizens retreated in silence for a long time, contemplating the significance of the emperor's message. Make America Great One of the first sight and sound newsreels produced by the Fox News Service in early 1929 featured Italy's Prime Minister Benito Mussolini speaking in English and offering praise for the United States and its Italian immigrants. His main message was, quote, Make America Great. One of the earliest newsreels in history showed Mussolini sending a powerful message to their soon-to-be adversaries. My fellow citizens who are working to make America great. The video was produced by the company that would become 20th Century Fox and was screened before the F.W. Murnau film Sunrise. In it, Mussolini addressed the audience in English, including the 1.8 million Italians working hard to make a new home in America. I am very glad to be able to express my friendly feelings towards the American nation. Friendship with which Italy looks at the millions of citizens who from Alaska to Florida, from the Pacific to the Atlantic, live in the United States, is today deeply rooted in our heart. This feeling, created by mutual interests, so contributed to the preparation of an even brighter era in the life of both nations. I agree the wonderful energy the American people, and I see and recognize among you sons of your land as well as ours, my fellow citizens who are working to make America great. I salute the great American people. I salute the Italians of America who unite in a single love our two nations. By 1930, more Italian-born immigrants populated the United States than any other nationality. Mussolini would eventually embrace fascism and lose his life at the hands of Italian partisans. BBC closed down. High-definition television was launched shortly before World War II, and the BBC was the first network to provide the service. However, its splendor was eclipsed by the upcoming war against the Nazis. On September 1st, 1939, the transmission was shut down following Disney's Mickey's Gala premiere. It would be the last broadcast for years. While radio was well adopted by the general population, only 20,000 households owned a television set. The new technology was regarded as a luxury, and for many families in London and the home countries, it was simply not affordable. In addition, creating a TV show was highly expensive, and resources from the entertainment industry were needed elsewhere during wartime. The primary purpose behind launching the TV service was that the government was interested in developing cathode ray tube technology, which was crucial for effective radar defenses. In fact, several engineers were recruited to work with the radars during the war. The BBC broadcast was also interrupted because it was believed that the strong signals coming from the transmitter in Alexandra Palace would potentially provide the enemy with navigational aid. However, this was eventually used as an advantage, and television played an intriguing role as a defense strategy. The remaining engineers at the transmission station used the broadcast signals to confuse the enemy's navigation systems, a technique used in the Battle of the Beams. During the post-war, the BBC had to convince skeptical audiences that television was a worthy alternative to radio, and its broadcast returned on June 7th, 1946, with a repeat of the same cartoon with which it had left off. Stalin's secret speech. It is believed that Joseph Stalin gave a secret speech to the Political Bureau of the Central Committee of the Communist Party on August 19, 1939. In it, the Soviet leader allegedly justified the strategy to promote conflict in Europe, which contributed to their plans for the future expansion of communism. Top-secret speeches were common during the era, given the secretive nature of the Politburo, 
and evidence found in respectable archives has been thoroughly studied and published. Although no first-hand evidence of Stalin's 1939 meeting has been disclosed, the Russian version of the speech is held at the Center for Historic Documents of the former Special Archives of the USSR. In the available materials, Stalin expressed his expectations about the war and how it could debilitate both the capitalist West and the fascist Nazis, which would render Germany vulnerable to Sovietization. In addition, territorial expansion to the Baltic countries, Finland, and Poland would follow. A reconstruction of the speech by Carl O. Nordling reads, quote, Comrades, it is in the interest of the USSR, the workers' homeland, that a war breaks out between the Reich and the capitalist Anglo-French bloc. It is imperative that we agree to conclude the pact proposed by Germany, and then work in such a way that this war, once it is declared, will be prolonged maximally. We must strengthen our economic and propaganda work in the belligerent countries in order to be prepared when the war ends. Historians still disagree whether the speech took place or not. But sources from the Havas News Agency from Geneva, as well as findings from Soviet special archives, supposedly recorded by a calm intern member at the meeting, suggest it could have happened. Thank you for watching our video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels for more historical content and mysteries.